Welcome to Francis Quilts, the site dedicated to the wonderful art of quilting, with a few other fun things thrown in as well. If you like what you see here, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can be notified of future videos. Hey guys, welcome back to Francis Quilts. Today we're going to start day one of a three-part series where I show you how I quilted this fun little piece right here. As you can see, it's not completely finished yet, but I want to get you up to date with the quilting on it. Today, we are going to look at just um, some, some video of me quilting certain areas, in particular, these words, the flower, and the, the monarch. And tomorrow, we're going to look at the process that I used to figure out how I was going to quilt these background lines and, and all the background information. Uh, so we'll step through that, and then day three, we're going to actually uh, finish the quilting with doing all of the straight lines and everything to finish off the quilting. Now, there's still a little bit more to do to finish this. I have some a stem and some leaves to add, and then a whole bunch more flower buds to add to the top of it uh, that are going to be loose, but that can come later. But for today, let's just get started and just watch a little bit of the quilting. When I first started the quilting process, I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to quilt the whole thing. So I did what I always do is just start with the thing that I know. I knew that the words were going to have to be outlined, so that was the first thing that I did. You can see that I'm using my applique foot here so that I can see a little bit better. Uh, a little bit later in the video, I'll show you how that looks, when, what I'm actually seeing when I'm looking into that, um, into that foot. I also decided that I wanted to go around each one of these letters two times uh, when I was quilting. A couple of reasons for that. First of all, I didn't want it to, um, to shred. I'm hoping I can, can stop some shredding by, by putting a double line of stitching. And secondly, if you're not exactly straight, when you put that second line of stitching on there, it covers up a lot of those things that didn't look right in the first place. So there's kind of a twofold reason for doing this double stitching. Because I'm hoping to get this quilt into a, a challenge, accepted in a challenge and hopefully in a show, I'd originally thought that I was going to bury all of my threads, you know, pull the bobbin thread up at the top and pull the bobbin thread up at the bottom or at the end of it and bury every one of those. But honestly, after doing the four letters and more, which was uh, maybe 12 or 13 different berries, I decided that it simply was not worth it. Instead, I decided to start um, just stitching a few small stitches at the beginning and at the end, and then carefully clipping it. So that's what I'm doing here as I go around the eye for the second time. When I get to the end, I just overlap my stitching just a little bit, make some small stitches, and then I'm just going to lift my uh, needle out, scoot it over, put my needle back in, and start again. Now, sometimes you can get some thread nest in here when you do this, but it doesn't happen that often, and it's such an easier way to do your quilting. Since I had that orange thread in the machine, I decided to go ahead and quilt the butterfly. Um, again, I'm just doing a stitch right around very, as close to the edge as I can get, just taking a few stitches to start it off. Um, for the butterfly, I did not go around it twice. I'm not sure what my thinking was, but I really don't want to accentuate the stitches on the butterfly. I really want that to just stand out by itself. Now, as I moved this last word, I uh, changed the angle on the camera so that you can actually see down in there. And you can see that having it be an acrylic uh, bowl, basically, and having that opening in the center makes it very easy to see exactly where my uh, um, needle is going. And having that bowl on there means that it doesn't get caught underneath the pressure foot. If I was using my ruler foot, some of those edges are going to get caught, and I just didn't want that to happen. Again, moving to, um, to the, um, uh, the butterfly wings with that same color and stitching around it. After I had finished the butterfly wings, there were a lot of areas that needed these threads cut. And I use my little curved scissors. I'm going to do a review of these scissors sometime in the next few weeks. But I love them because they just have a little bit of a curve to them. They are super sharp. 
and man does it make uh, snipping all of these threads easy. Uh, you can get close in there without having to worry about cutting other fabric while you are snipping those threads and they just work beautifully for this purpose. Again, a review is coming. Next, it was time to move to the milkweed flower. Um, as you can see, some of these um, uh, florets I'd already stitched on. These last ones were some that I had um, uh, just cut out of fabric with some fusible on the back of them and had fused them down. I'd done a little bit of scribbling on them with a marker just to add a little bit more texture to them. And now I'm just coming in and stitching out the petals. I'm not worrying about whether they come up a little bit at the, at the, uh, the around the edges of the fabric. I think that will actually make it look better. But I just did really quick stitching on those uh, to hold them in place. Again, I, with this piece, I'm just trying to get a lot of depth to it. So now I wanted to work on the, the background green. A lot of this is going to be covered up in the final analysis with some, uh, some free petals that are not going to be, be stitched down. Um, but I really wanted, again, to get some dimension and add a little bit of texture to it. So here I'm doing just a very small stipple with some little loops thrown in, trying hard to stay off of the whites. I didn't do that perfectly. There's a couple of places that it hit onto the white, but I don't think you're really gonna see that in the end. It was fun trying to meander my way around and not have to stop very many times. Now it was time to do the black on the butterfly. And there was one area in particular that I had to think about, and that was where the uh, the two wings overlap each other. I needed to really make sure I was marking and, and quilting that area right there just so that those that wing, that bottom wing, you could tell that it was separate. Once I had done that, I was ready to do the, um, the, the black where I had actually painted the little dots on. And I wanted, again, to give it some texture. So I am also doing a little bit of a stipple in there, but I'm making sure that I go around each one of those dots as I come to them. So it's some stipple, there's some, uh, some loops in the stippling as well, and then I'm just circling all of those, those white dots. Now, as often happens, when you're using a dark thread on the uh, top and a light thread on the bottom, or vice versa, you get little pokies coming up. So I had some little bits of white that were coming up uh, and showing on the front, and I wasn't happy with that, so I needed a way to get rid of those. So I did the best thing that I could. I pulled out my Fabrico markers and I pulled out the black one and I colored all those areas in. Now, before you do this, make sure that it is going to, um, to look okay on the fabric. In this case, if it was a little modeled, I didn't care because I it just gave, again, some more depth to that black fabric. But um, as it ended up, once this this um, ink dried, you really can't see it at all on the on the black, but I would have been okay if it had been. So I'm just, as places that I had done the stitching lines and that I could see them, I'm just going over them just carefully with the black. The final thing to do was just to add a little bit more to uh, his, his antennae and his legs. Uh, again, I had stitched around these. In some cases, uh, like this one here, you can see that my stitching line was not exactly with what I had drawn on. So I went back and just made it so that my stitching line was exactly with what was drawn on. Okay, that's day one. Come back tomorrow and we'll do a little bit more. Thanks for joining me here today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Francis Quilts. Remember, if you like what you've seen, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please check out my website and daily blog at francisquilts.com and I can be found on Facebook and Instagram at Francis Quilts. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you again soon.